Hello and welcome to another video in our tips and tricks series provided to you by Solid Experts. My name is Michael Habersh, and this time we'll be covering one of my favorite features in X-Design, Design Guidance. One of the most innovative aspects of X-Design is its Design Guidance functionality. This generates geometry in a model based on loading conditions. For example, in this video we'll focus on designing a bracket component that connects an axle with bushings and a wheel to a base plate. In order to generate geometry using design guidance, you'll need to complete three key steps. Apply restraints to existing geometry, add loads to existing geometry, and set a build volume for the size of the generated geometry. Once these are set, X-Design does all the work generating the geometry for you. This is an iterative process that takes a few minutes to complete and results in truly unique geometry designed specifically for your model. In this video, I'll walk through the steps to create an initial solution, a bracket design, then I'll refine the solution, create profiles, and use them as guides to build a new component. So let's move over to X-Design and get started. To begin, I'll click the Design Guidance action bar. First, I'll add restraints, which I can create by clicking on Fixture. This option keeps the selected face from moving in the normal direction. I'll select this face and click OK. The second step is to apply loads to the model that it will experience in real-world conditions. In this step, a belt around the wheel is pulling the wheel shaft and bushings upwards. To apply the forces at this location, I'll click on Force. In this case, I'll use a distributed force and give it a value equal to a human climbing stairs, or 1350 newtons. I select a face of the shaft and the load symbol appears. However, the force direction needs a little work. To make sure the force is pointing upward, I'll click Other Direction and click a model face normal to the direction I want. I can click Reverse Direction so it is facing directly upward. With all these options set, I'll click OK. For the next step, I'll click Design Guidance and the New Design option. You can use the settings to set the granularity of the solution. Coarse is the fastest, but least detailed. Medium and fine increase the detail at the cost of some time. The desired mass sets a target mass on a slider from light to heavy. We'll set it to 50%. Volume can be used to exclude some bodies from the solution and include some faces. There's also where you set the size of the bounding box around the solution. Using the drag handles, I can reshape the box so it is above the shaft and bushings, but below the top of the wheel. Click Symmetry. This allows you to concentrate on designing half or less of the model. In this example, if I click the z-axis, the box becomes just one side of the model. The direction option allows you to flip the visible side. I'll clear the symmetry settings for now and skip the results until we have some to show and start the process by clicking generate. During the generation process, the shape changes over time. In this example, the initial solution is rough and overlaps some of the components, but seems to be moving in the right direction. We'll need some more refinement, but first let's view the results. Show granular results shows the geometry represented by blocks. Increased surface smoothing provides better quality surfaces by default. Show mesh display displays the analysis mesh. And show contact with boundaries highlights in yellow where the bounding box and body meet. Using inspect details, I can show and move slices or even regions of the generated body. We can see there's no hole for the shaft, which we'll have to fix in the next iteration. Next, Shape Transparency sets the opacity of the body against the slice or region using a slider. Finally, I'll click OK to save the solution. We have a solution, but it's not yet detailed enough to use as the basis for a new design. I'll double click the Design Guidance feature in the Design Manager to edit it. Let's go to Settings, increase the granularity to medium, and change the desired mass to about 30%. Next, I'll click Volume and Exclude Regions. We don't want the model to interfere with the existing components, so we can select them. The shaft, one bushing, wheel, and base plate. We also want certain faces to be used by the model, so I'll click Preserve Regions and select two faces of the base plate. Again, I'll click Generate. This time, it follows the faces a little closer. Note that the shaft no longer interferes and the holes will be rough but visible in the solution. Back in Results, I'll click Inspect Details and Highlight Slice. Dragging the arrow shows sections of the model. I'll click OK and save the component. Next, I'll click Create Profiles, Polyline, and add three additional planes. I'll click Add Profiles to create the geometry and click OK. Add Profiles creates a series of sketches added to the top of the Design Manager tree. 
This is the first real geometry created from the solution. It's also a suggested general shape, and we can take what we want from this to build a new part. So let's create a new part. I'll click the assembly action bar, create a new part, and name it stand. I'd like the base flange area to be thicker than the solution described, so I'll sketch on the step, convert those edges to sketch geometry, and extrude the sketch up to the base plate face. Using that base feature, I'll add a new sketch on the top face and borrow some more geometry, an edge, and add a three-point arc. After editing the shaft component and adding a construction line through the center, I'll return to the stand and add a new plane at the center of the shaft. I'll add another sketch using a converted edge and a three-point arc, exit that sketch, and then add a loft between the sketches. Lastly, I'll add a cylinder boss and a hole for the shaft to complete the model. And you're done! You've successfully created a new component using Design Guidance in XDesign. In the next video, I'll show you how to use Design Guidance to redesign an existing component. Hope to see you there!